Nearly 200,000 people in South Korea's Gyeonggi province are part of a radical experiment. They receive about $220 every three months, no questions asked. Gyeonggi Pay is a cash payout based on a concept called universal basic income, where citizens, regardless of employment or income, are indefinitely given a sum of money to help reduce inequality and poverty. Universal basic income has different names, and the idea has been floated in other countries. The freedom dividend of $1,000 a month for every American adult starting at age 18. During the coronavirus pandemic, Gyeonggi Pay was expanded to 13 million people in the province, including newborns, to help them ride out the economic slowdown. And there was one catch. People had to spend the money only in their neighborhoods to help stimulate the local economy. The popularity of the local program during the pandemic has now drawn attention at the national level. And there's another big reason. South Korea is one of the most automated countries in the world, and about 15% of jobs in the country are projected to be automated by 2024. So some politicians, especially in the manufacturing hub of Gyeonggi, want to give all citizens about $430 every month to help prepare for a future with robots. So the success of South Korea's experiment could change how other countries think about adopting their own universal basic income programs. Lee myung -ah has been part of what universal basic income watchers call one of the world's largest experiments of the concept. It gives 24-year-olds in Gyeonggi province $250 every quarter to help them get started in life. This money has allowed Myung-ah to quit several part-time jobs and focus on finishing her bachelor's degree. Gyeonggi pay comes in the form of a credit card, and myung -ah has to spend each round of money locally before the next payout. She can't buy things in the town next door or at chains like McDonald's. Myung-ah's spending has a trickle-down effect on businesses like this traditional market. Lee chung -hwa is a fish seller, and he says Gyeonggi Pay has helped bring in new customers. He says March was a tough month as the country was just emerging from the first wave of the pandemic and fewer people came to shop. And Gyeonggi Province will pay Gyeonggi Province disaster-related basic income. The next month, Gyeonggi Pay credit cards were made available to 13 million people. Regardless of age or income level, it is paid quickly. It's paid in local currency. And the program was complemented with additional coronavirus stimulus payments and it helps increase small business revenue. Businesses that accepted Gyeonggi Pay saw their sales increase by about 45 percent. Each transaction is funneled back to Gyeonggi government headquarters, where officials sift through data to see how every penny is spent. Gyeonggi Governor Lee Jae-myung says data collection is critical to fine-tuning the program, because how else would he know if the money was actually lifting the local economy? 그게 액수는 크지 않지만 골목 상권, 영세 자영업자들의 매출을 늘려주면서 특히 전통 시장 같은 곳이 다시 부활하는 그런 실적을 낸 일이 있습니다. This raises a privacy concern, especially if it's done by the government. Iana Marinescu is a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and she studies the economic impact of universal basic income programs. If you're being tracked, uh, that means that the government, you know potentially, you know, in a bad case scenario, might use that to uh, exercise political influence. And so there's all these different aspects how, you know, other benefits might be taken away from you. You might be put under pressure to do certain things politically. The Gyeonggi government said that it asks permission to collect data when people register for their credit cards online. It also said it only analyzes aggregate data and not individual data points. Marinescu says telling people where they can spend money sounds like an efficient way to boost local consumption. But this policy has a loophole. Money is fungible and that what they're able to spend locally, that means they're saving on whatever other money they have and that other money they can spend it on non-local or non-eligible types of goods and services. Governor Lee is using the success of Gyeonggi Pay as a pitch for the 2022 presidential election. And he's now leading in the polls. 
He's proposing to give about $430 every month to all South Koreans to make sure the country isn't caught off guard by job losses to automation. This plan is personal because his province is a manufacturing base for major South Korean companies like Samsung and Hyundai. Corona-19가 우리 사회가 앞으로 맞닥뜨려야 될 4차 산업혁명 시대, 또 소위 노동의 종말 시대, 극단적 양극화의 시대를 아주 급작스럽게 앞당긴 측면이 있기 때문에 새로운 기회 요인이었다는 생각도 하고 있습니다. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Universal basic income has also been championed by tech entrepreneurs who believe automation will replace workers. And unlike unemployment benefits that run out over time, these payments would be a stable flow of income. The governor's program would cost the country roughly $260 billion a year, and he plans to partly fund it through what he calls a robot tax, essentially a levy on factories that have automated their production. Some opponents who think a national program is too expensive say money should not be spent on people who don't need any help. But Governor Lee says all tax-paying citizens should be included. According to a June survey, nearly 50% of South Koreans are in favor of a national universal basic income program and they will have a chance to send a message to the government during the next presidential election.